Hey there, YouTube, Travis here. And if you can believe it, it really has been three years since I picked up this 1992 Toyota pickup. So this truck, like myself, pretty soon will be turning 30 years old. And I wanted to make a video on what it's like to daily drive a older Toyota pickup like this. We'll talk about things like uh, the costs I've incurred and just the general pros and cons of owning a older four-cylinder, simple uh, Japanese pickup truck. Worth mentioning here, uh, this is not my first rodeo with old Toyota SUVs and trucks. I've owned a couple before, and so when I bought this one, I tried to set myself up for success uh, by buying one that had a smooth running engine, a really strong clutch, uh, good brakes, and just had a lot of general signs of maintenance. Um, this was also a no-rust vehicle being out here as a local truck in the Pacific Northwest, uh, so I didn't have to deal with that. I have definitely dealt with that in the past. Uh, but because of that, I paid a premium originally. I paid just shy of $5,000. And as we get into the cost breakdown, we'll see what my uh, maintenance costs and ownership costs were like. But before we get into costs, let's go over, uh, at least in my experience, my pros and cons of uh, daily driving a 30-year-old Toyota pickup in the year 2021. So this part of the video will be useful if you're in the market for a sub $5,000 pickup truck uh, for light duty tasks. So with a truck like this, it's actually something I consider to be a pretty solid investment. Um, my hope is that with proper maintenance and upkeep of the truck that I will be able to get most of my money back uh, when I go to sell it. You know, the availability of a, of a simple utilitarian truck, it's something that's really hard to find. A lot of modern pickup trucks are really expensive. A lot of used pickup trucks are really expensive. Uh, so a truck like this will hold its value very well. Next thing is, can this truck actually keep up in modern traffic? Well, the acceleration certainly leaves something to be desired. You're playing with a 110-ish horsepower four-cylinder, but between the stick shift um, and the factory wheels and tires, which I put on the truck, it had a three-inch lift and uh, some big meaty tires on it when I bought it. That was really hurting my top speed. As of right now, I can keep it above 80, between 80 and 85 is, is about where we max out, which is plenty acceptable for modern highways. Now next is maintenance items and the ability for the casual hobbyist uh, to fix them. Uh, there are not many fancy things that can go wrong with the truck. Just like any old vehicle, there are going to be issues, but you're setting yourself up for success pretty good if you have a manual transmission, manual transfer case, manual locking hubs for the front wheel instead of something, you know, vacuum actuated. Uh, most things under the hood are pretty easy to reach, spark plugs, wires, other things like the radiator, throttle position sensor. And also, more importantly, is that, you know, an old Toyota truck like this has a really good following. There's a lot of forums, Facebook groups, um, all sorts of information on the internet, YouTube videos that really make it easy uh, to maintain a truck like this. Next on my list of pros is the hauling capacity. Again, I do a lot of light duty stuff with this truck. I haven't yet found anything that I can't move. Um, things like hot tubs, complete sectional couches, fridges, um, stoves and washing machines, certainly plenty of mopeds um, and many dump runs uh, for my, my house I purchased. Um, so for me, you know, this is, this is great. If I ever needed to do anything more than that, you know, if I needed an actual full-size bed or some serious towing capacity, um, I would definitely look at something a little bigger. But again, for the hobbyist and just kind of every man for doing pickup truck things, truck of this size is excellent. The real unicorn combination for these 90s Toyota trucks definitely seems to be uh, the extended cab, which first became available in 89, um, along with everything else, the manual uh, transmission, transfer case, 4x4. But to be honest, living in the city, being able to park this single cab pickup uh, is really easy. Having a bench, you can fit three people. It is lots of fun. Um, and I actually don't mind not having the extended cab. So if you can find a single cab for a little cheaper, um, it's it's uh, definitely something worth considering. So those were some pros. Uh, it's some, some really good benefits of owning an old Toyota pickup truck and driving it daily. Uh, what are the cons? So probably first on my list is the ride. Um, this truck is, is a real rough riding son of a gun. It, uh, it's very bouncy going down the road. You've got your grab handles for driver and passenger uh, to grab onto. It's the kind of truck if you picked your parent up in it from the airport, uh, they would complain about it immediately. It is quite noticeable how rough the ride is. Um, it's just something you get used to. 
but it's really also something to seriously consider if, if something like that is, is important to you. So other things, um, we're gonna go into interior stuff now. So firstly, um, this actually was a factory air conditioned option truck. Um, however, at some point, someone along the way removed the belt that goes to the AC compressor. So as much as I'd like to add it, it's gonna be a big project, a bit of a pain. I have to decide whether I'm going to buy some R12 refrigerant off of eBay um, or whether I have a shop convert it to R134A and also dive into many other things that could be missing or wrong with the lines, the compressor, who knows? So that's a project for another day. Um, a lot of these trucks were not optioned for air conditioning. So that's kind of curious that this even has it. So if you're shopping for a truck, you may find it. Never had it from the factory. Other things that are just a result of this being a minimalist kind of truck uh, so you have no intermittent wipers. Um, the wipers are either all the way on or um, slowly on, but there's nothing, there's no intermittent wipers. Uh, I did buy a wiper switch from a higher trimmed Forerunner of this era, but in order to install that, it's not just plug and play. You have to modify some of the pins that the connector goes into. Um, it's just a bigger project and, and one of those things that uh, is waiting for a free weekend. Other things, this steering column uh, is not adjustable. This was an option on some of the trucks. This one was not optioned for it. So uh, you can move the bench seat back and forth a little bit, but you kind of do just have to get used to the driving position that this steering wheel uh, asks of you. So other things, uh, safety is definitely a consideration here. It wasn't until 95, 96 where these Toyota pickups got an airbag. Um, so you have no airbag, no anti-lock brakes. Um, you've really just got uh, and no crumple zones either. Um, again, that's something that, you know, if you own any older vehicle, you'd probably have to accept. And in an age of distracted driving, it's uh, one other thing to really think about as you're sharing the road with all sorts of distracted people. Other things. Uh, this is a very high theft vehicle. Uh, it's very easy to steal these pickup trucks. I do what I can, but I'm also secretly wondering if it's not a matter of if, but when, because uh, that is an issue where I live. And also it's worth mentioning your MPGs. So I get like 19 on the highway, maybe 15 in town. Um, it's plenty fine, but you know, you're driving a 110 horsepower four cylinder. It really is just older tech, but Sometimes I wish the miles per gallon could be better, but that's not really at the forefront of your mind when you're looking at buying an old truck. Now, the last thing here, and I'll mention this as both pro and a con, is the 22 RE. Um, it's a pro because these motors definitely have a pedigree for lasting a really long time, many hundreds of thousands of miles, being very easy to fix, having great aftermarket support. It's also a con because while this is a, a good reputation, um, there are still definitely some issues related to this engine you have to keep in mind. I don't necessarily agree that it's the miracle engine. Everyone says it is. Um, these certainly, you know, the fuel injected version of this engine absolutely has uh, the well-known timing chain issue where the timing chain will stretch the guides and wear on the guides. Maybe it's the tensioners, maybe it's the chain itself. It'll wear the guides, the plastic guides, which will break. And then eventually if you keep running it, it'll be making a ton of noise, but it'll puncture a water jacket. So the timing chain almost has to have a service kind of like the timing belt. Some people, it happens to them around 100,000 miles. Some people can go much longer, um, but doing the timing chain uh, is certainly a more involved job than a belt. So it's an added expense. It's probably something you'll have to deal with if you own one of these or own a couple of them. Um, so I put that in both the pro and the con territory. To be honest, when I'm helping friends shop for vehicles, I'm usually more apt to recommend a late 90s, early 2000s Toyota. Uh, in that era, you have the 3RZ four-cylinder or the 5VZ FE six-cylinder. Uh, this early 90s stuff, you'll have the 22RE or the 3VZ. Um, both have an Achilles heel. Again, 22RE with its timing chain, the 3VZ uh, with its head gasket issues. So, um, you know, for someone who's not a car person, I'll generally recommend they get something a little newer. But if you're willing to keep an ear to it and really, really kind of um, keep an eye on it and, and, and understand and know your engine, 
uh, this can be a great combination. All right, so owning an old truck for three years, what did this all cost? Well, as you can see by the silver tip, this is definitely a newer exhaust system from the catalytic converter back. Uh, that was about $115, and then it required another $30 worth of rubber hangers, uh, as well as different hooks and, and attachments, uh, because the generic exhaust didn't come with uh, what I needed. Had a buddy uh, helped me weld my old roommate, and uh, this was a nice, cheaper job. The old pipe had a lot, a lot of repairs on it. Next item, and I was a little deceived by the seller of this truck, uh, was the gauge cluster. My hodometer was not turning when I bought the vehicle, which was not awesome. Uh, thankfully, I pulled a Carfax, and it had gone through emissions testing a few months prior, and, and the mileage read a little lower then, so I knew it had to have stopped working recently. But still, I had to eBay a new cluster. Uh, these were cable-driven speedometers up until about 92, and then for 92 to 95, uh, they are electronic cable goes to a little unit which this gauge cluster plugs into so I had to buy a very specific cluster and then uh, I had to first off that new cluster found out that the speedometer was not working on that one but the odometer did so I basically took two and made one I tried to fix this odometer before I bought the eBay unit I redid solder joints I looked at just about everything I could, and I honestly couldn't make it work. So I had to buy another unit that was 250 bucks because it has to be a 92 to 95 unit. We have some nice KYB shocks all around, front and rear. Uh, I was in a place where I was super busy at the time and paid a shop to do all four. That was $650. I felt a little foolish later on. We did a project where we took the lift and tires off this truck and I realized how easy it is uh, to do shocks, but that's a cost. The old rear ones were original and they had definitely some cracking for the rubber and the fronts were aftermarket, but they were not in great shape. So I had a symptom on this truck where the low and the medium fan speeds uh, did nothing, only high worked. Um, it ended up being the blower motor resistor, which I don't know if I can quite jam my camera up there to see, um, but it is right under the glove box, quite easy to access. That was a $15 part. Other than that, it's been regular maintenance items. Uh, I had all the fluids done except for the uh, diffs and the transfer case and the transmission because that's just gear oil. Um, so your power steering fluid, your brake fluid, your clutch fluid, um, coolant and an oil change, of course, that all ran me around $400. Beyond that, it's just been oil changes. Uh, this has proven to be a pretty, pretty uh, easy to foresee and easy to uh, maintain vehicle. I haven't yet had a shop who has refused to work on it or found anything crazy weird with it. I've generally been very pleased uh, with my cost of ownership. So, where do we go from here? Ultimately, I still really like this truck, I'm planning on keeping it for a long time. I'm very happy with the cost of maintenance. It is extremely fun to drive, even with its kind of annoying things about it that are just representative of the era that it was made. Um, you know, honestly, the cost of new cars and even used cars right now is at such a premium. I'm probably going to be driving this for a long time. Anyway, I hope you like that uh, kind of retrospective on what it's like to daily drive a 90s Toyota pickup. Uh, my cost of ownership, and general experience. Okay there, YouTube. Until next time. All right, everybody. You're also going to hear my favorite sound in the world. This might be some nostalgia. When you've left your keys in the ignition and you open the door. That's definitely an old car thing.